Welcome back to the Content Areas Instructional Strategies Workshop from Southern Utah University. This video focuses on reading strategies. So our goals for this video is to explain the importance of reading practice for content learning and to identify strategies that will help students to focus on meaning when they're learning. In other words, our goal here is to help students learn your content through the medium of reading. Here's some key words that we want to talk about today. Input. We've talked about input before, but input along with listening are the two receptive or maybe a better word is the decoding skills where we take language and we decode it in order to get meaning. So reading is one of the important skills that we need in order to learn or gather information. High frequency is an adjective that uh, refers to vocabulary that occurs often in the language. High frequency words are words that our students are more likely to know. Low frequency words, especially content area vocabulary that may be specific to the topic that we're teaching may be low frequency. And that may be vocabulary that we need to teach our, our students. And lastly, the word genre. Genre can refer to the specific structure and style of a text that may change depending on the content area. We lead, read lots of different genres and especially academically, and learning how to read those different genres can help our students navigate and process text more effectively so that they get that meaning from the text that they need. Here's the framework we introduced in our last video. This framework comes from Paul Nation, and he says that we need to have a balance of all four approaches to language learning in order for students to really acquire language. Now, we renamed these four categories uh, into these more classroom-friendly uh, descriptions, and we're going to focus today on encouraging reading skills. Let's talk for a moment about comprehensible input. Language acquisition experts talk about the importance of input, that students need to receive either listening or speaking to understand. Now, when it comes to comprehensible input, what we're talking about is that input, that listening or that reading, where we already uh, know most of the words in it. Uh, if we don't know most of the words in it, then we can't understand the meaning. So if we want to be able to remember and understand at least 70% of the articles or books that we read, then there's a certain number of vocabulary words that we need to know already uh, before we can understand that text. And experts suggest that for informational reading, and this is most of the reading we do in school, we need to know 95% of the words of that text if we're going to understand the meaning that the text is trying to teach us. Now, if we're doing pleasure reading, we're reading for fun, we're reading stories, we probably want to know even more words. We should know 98% of those words. This can seem like a lot of words that we need to know. But let's keep in mind that the majority of words that students encounter in these texts are going to be high frequency words. This means that probably 80% uh, of the words are within the 2000 most common words of English, words that our students are likely to have already seen and know. But then there's a smaller set of maybe 15, 12% of the words that might be more specific to the content area we're teaching, or they might be more academic words that our students may not have encountered as much in lower level English classes. We might need to identify what those new words are for our students so that then they can be prepared to understand those words before they get to the text. So this is kind of our job. We need to make sure that we're selecting texts that are at level for our students. They're not too hard. There's just a little bit of new vocabulary, maybe 5%. Anything more than the 5%, we need to teach before the students read. Otherwise, they're very unlikely to understand what they're reading. So let's talk about why reading matters so much. 
Reading is the primary way, especially in academic environments, where we gather new information. So when I'm teaching a class about a, my content, I used reading texts as a way to help my students learn that content. Yes, I'll also use presentations in the class or lectures as we sometimes call them, but reading is one of the other very important ways that we help learners learn new information about different topic areas. Now, whether that's textbook reading or reading articles or other kinds of informational sheets that we share with our students. But students need that practice, that practice with a comprehensible text to build their knowledge the other purpose of practicing reading with students is because reading looks different with different content areas. When we read a text that's a novel or a story, the structure is very different. If we read a different genre, maybe scientific writing, then it also has a different organizational structure. So we need to identify what kinds of genres or organizational structures we use in our content area and help students understand how that structure works. How is it organized? Where do they find the important information? And how should they read it? Do they read it from start to end? Or are there other ways they can read it by looking for key points within the text and then locating the information that is most important for them? Understanding how to help students find meaning from the things that they read is an important skill we all need to develop. So let's talk about some strategies for helping students to focus on meaning when reading. We're not using reading to teach language. We hope that language learning is happening, but our focus here primarily is on the meaning. So we have to do a little bit of language teaching to help students get that meaning. Now, the first thing we can do is what I talked about, pre-teach vocabulary. L look through a text ahead of time, find out what words are likely to be new for students, and then before students read the text, you identify those words for them and teach them those words. That way, when they read the text, they'll be prepared, they'll have recognized those words, and so they'll be more likely to understand the text that we're teaching. There are some great technology tools that we can use for this, and we can go over those as a group later and help you feel more confident uh, identifying which vocabulary you should focus on when you pre-teach vocabulary. Another thing we can do with students is preview texts. Teach them how to preview a text. Teach them how to look for things before they read the whole text. Do we look at titles? Do we look at graphs, charts, images, headings? Um, if it's an academic text that has an introduction and a conclusion, we might want to skim those before we read the whole text. When I teach students in my content area classes how to read academic articles, I teach them that most people in my field don't read the article from the beginning to the end. Instead, they read part in the beginning, then they jump and to the bottom, they read that. If it's still interesting, then they go to a certain section and they read more. And then if they have more time, then they'll read kind of beginning to end. So understanding how to read a text and what order to read things and look for things can help students make good choices about how to use their time when previewing a text. We can also model the text processes. Uh, many students don't know how to read anything other than a storybook where they start at the beginning and they go to the end. But if we can do a read aloud where we have students watch us Maybe on the screen, we put on a text that we want our students to read, a practice one, and we think aloud what we're thinking as we read the text and show them how a good reader processes that text. What do they do when they come to the introduction? How do they identify what the purpose of the text is? What do they do when they come across an unusual or new vocabulary word? Do they spend all their time trying to figure it out right then, or do they make a guess and they move on? showing students what your reading process is can help them identify their self-talk, what they do in their brain when they read. And that's an important thing to model for students. As we mentioned, you could read aloud with your students. Maybe all students have a copy of the text and either you take turns reading if your students are comfortable with that, or they simply listen to you read the text aloud. This can help them develop uh, a better fluent reading rate because they train their eye to read in a way that is comfortable with the speed that you're reading. 
Uh, you can also train them to skip vocabulary that they don't know when they come across the text. They could circle it or write it down in a list with the page number. And then when they're done with the text, they can go back and use a dictionary or other sources to learn more about that wor word. But what we're trying to teach them is let's focus mostly on the meaning um, instead of stopping every page or every sentence when we come across a new word. If that new word is coming up a lot, then that's an important word and we need to learn it. But if it only occurs once in the text, it may not be essential for meaning. So teaching students about how to know when to stop and read vocabulary or when to skip it is an important skill. Lastly, we may also want to talk about collocations. This is especially helpful when we are pre-teaching vocabulary. We help students understand which words tend to occur together, to collocate. So collocate, there are certain verbs that always occur with certain prepositions, or some nouns that are very common with certain adjectives. Teaching students those patterns and those common ways can help them read more fluently, but also help them understand uh, and predict the text that they're reading. So I hope that these strategies have helped you see some new ways to incorporate reading into your classroom. We want to teach students both the bottom-up reading skills, okay, help them better understand how sounds make words, but also the top-down skills, understanding how to predict texts and how to use our knowledge about text organization to understand the meaning of the text as well. Together, both the bottom up and the top down strategies can help make our students better readers so that they can better learn the content of, that we are teaching them.